hello everybody welcome to the writers afterglow podcast um if you're new here my name is alia jade and i am the host of the writers afterglow podcast where we talk about all things writing um and i give you tips and motivation and yeah so if you like that kind of thing make sure to stick around so today's episode we're going to be talking about books again um i did i just did an episode on books last week but i'm doing another one because i wanted to do episode about romance because um romance is a genre that is hated throughout the industry i feel like it's it's also loved by a lot but a lot of people look down on it this is like common knowledge i feel like that some people are like you like you read romance like that's not real literature and stuff i'm of the belief that you can read whatever the hell you want to read um i have sometimes looked down on romance readers i can't say that i haven't um when i joined bookstagram i was like kind of shocked and a little bit irritated at how many of the people on bookstagram solely read romance and i was like i hate to be that person but you're like just reading like you know what i mean and since then i've kind of like become a little bit less pretentious and i've been like okay like you can read whatever you want like romance is fun and i read romance all the time so i don't even know why i'm judging but like you know i I always i read like everything so i judge people who also who don't read everything but that's a character flaw i'm working on (laughs) um anyway (laughs) So I wanted to do an episode rating every romance book I've read this year, which is a lot because every time my mental health gets bad, I read romance because it's easy to digest. And I've always considered that a bad thing. Like I've always been like, oh no, I'm reading romance. Like someone stopped me. But actually it's a good thing, I think. I'm pretty sure the, these kind of books actually like really help my mental health and just keep me a little bit more sane, you know, and keep me rooted in reality, I feel like is good. So let's talk about romance books. Um... I think I'm going to rate all the books I was talking about and we'll probably have a few discussions about like, you know, we'll have some discussions about like, oh, stigma and like what's okay and what's not okay and stuff like that and age ratings and stuff. And then we might do a little bit of a a wrap up talk at the end. But yeah, let's just get into it. So I have my uh, books pulled up on my Notion and um, this list has every book I've marked as a romance book and I've finished reading. However, some of these are like books where romance was a subplot, but I just marked it as romance. So I'm not going to talk about those books and I'm just going to skip over them. I'm only going to talk about the books where romance is like a main plot. And I'm already... Re- okay, okay. I was like, where are half the books I read, but I found them. Okay, we're good. Let's start off with Better Than the Movies. I rated this one four stars. I really enjoyed this. This is a like YA romance. It was complete. I'm pretty sure it was completely clean because it was like high school age and it was like fun. Uh, very cute it's probably my favorite one of my favorite romance books i've read just contemporary romances it was adorable i shipped the main couple did i write anything i didn't write anything i don't usually like write notes about my books i just kind of rate them um so yeah this was a good book i recommend next one is people we meet on vacation by emily henry i've read all of emily henry's books except for beach read and happy place so i think i've only read two actually (laughs) um but I, I really like her, honestly, as an author. Even though I rated this book three and a half stars, I feel like it deserves a little bit more. Maybe like 3.75, but People We Meet on Vacation is a friends to love, what's kind of like friends to strangers to lovers, I guess. Um, it's about two friends who always go on vacation together, and then they have a falling out, and we don't really know what the falling out is about, but then they end up going on another vacation, and kind of in parallel, we learn about why they had a falling out, and they end up together. <laughs> I like this book. It was a little bit of the miscommunication trope. I... I have this like divide in my head. I have like two two wolves inside of me. One of them loves it when the two people are just completely oblivious to the fact that the other person likes them and they're like, I can't say anything because I don't want to ruin our friendship, but they don't like me. And then the other person is literally feeling the exact same way. I love that, but I also hate it. If it's well written, I can love it. But sometimes it's like, guys, like we know you like each other. Just please freaking kiss and stop, stop simping for each other in secret. It, like, you know what I mean? this book was kind of a mix of both like half the time i was like this is so cute and then half the time i was like okay we get it like shut up i liked it though so i give it three and a half stars which is still kind of low in my opinion but whatever um but this wasn't my favorite out of emily henry's books i did like book lovers a lot better so let's move on the next one is love on the brain by ali hazelwood i have read the love hypothesis i did like it um i don't talk about it that much because a lot of people don't like it and i don't want to make people mad at me for liking it but i thought it was cute so whatever um but i read love on the brain i didn't like this one as much as the love hypothesis i gave it two and a half stars which is really low for me actually i don't usually give books very low ratings um 
honestly, I could have rated this one a little bit higher. Probably like three stars was, would have been fine. Love on the Brain was fun. Um, I didn't like it as much as the Love Eyeball This Is, mostly because it was kind of, it was, okay, this is another trope in romance books that I don't like. This one I don't like at all. It's when she thinks that he hates her, but the truth is he just likes her, and she keeps misinterpreting everything he does as him hating her, and then there's like a scene where she's like, but I thought you hated me, and then he's like, I've been in love with you since we met, and then she like realizes that every interaction they've ever had is just him simping over her. And in this book in particular, like, he literally thinks that she's married because she, like, I don't know, like, I don't even remember, but I just remember that. I remember being pissed off at that. That bothers me. Like, it almost gives pick-me-girl energy. Like, oh, he could never like me. Like, he hates me. You know what I mean? I don't like it. So, that's why, I think that's why I rated this book so low. But the romance was cute. Um, And they were very, like, I love these little, um, Allie Hazelwood always writes, like, stem inist novellas no, novels and novellas she writes stem stories which is so cute as a stem girly myself it's cute i like to imagine that us stem girlies can find love as well um next book is called the upside of falling spoiler alert i hated this book and i've seen this book at barnes and noble and i didn't realize how popular it was until i realized it was also like kind of a book talk book but i didn't like it at all the writing style made me cringe there was like one or two scenes that were like it's saving grace that made it really cute but i gave it two stars i did not like it um something about the style i'm I'm pretty sure it was off to me and also i think the like love interest just kind of annoyed me a lot of the time and they i think they had like a third act fight or something like that and i didn't understand why i didn't like it but overall it was a cute book so i gave it two stars Okay, next up is I think the only book on this list that I did not finish, which is called The Cheat Sheet. And I've seen a lot of people like who liked this book. And honestly, I don't remember exactly why I didn't finish it. I think I just got bored, honestly. Um, it was too, not that it was too slow. It was like the same pace as other books, but something about it didn't keep me hooked. And maybe it might even be because I was able to read both sides. You got both the point of views and they both really like each other. And I was like, I was just pissed. Like, I was just annoyed at that point. I was like, guys, stop. So that was the cheat sheet. Um, this next book is, I guess it's a romance. It's kind of a sub, I don't know if it's a subplot romance or not, but Heartless by Marissa Mayer, one of my favorite books of all time. I don't even have a rating for it. I have a rating that's just like screaming and that's what this book has. It is, I guess, a romance. I guess the main plot is the romance of the book. So beautiful, amazing, heartbreaking. It's so freaking sad. Every time I read Heartless, every time I reread it, I need two weeks to recover, like mentally. And for those two weeks, all I can think about is this book. And it's insane. And I love it. And you should read it. Okay, next up. Um, sorry in advance, because this is a Colleen Hoover book. And you might not know how I feel about her. How I feel about her, I have like a like, I have like the weirdest relationship with Colleen Hoover books is that I'll read them. Like I read them and I it's like, I, I don't know. I have a fascination with them. So I read them just because I, I want to know what they're about. I'm the type of person I need to know. Like I want to know for myself and I want to read the book and experience it myself, even when I know I'm not going to like it. So this one is Ugly Love, which actually I didn't hate this one as much as I thought I would. And I, I didn't like it, but I thought it was like better than it ends with us because it wasn't as toxic. I mean, it was still pretty weird. Um, but I felt like the romance itself wasn't that bad. Like it wasn't that abuse or whoa, it wasn't that toxic is what I'm trying to say. It was still like not cool. And this was the one that has that like line about her sons. Yeah. Like this book is weird, bro. And when there's like one scene, skip a few, like maybe 10 seconds ahead if you don't want to hear this, but like there's one scene where like they drown or something and it's right after the line about her son's parts and I was like, guys, you deserve that. Like, that's what happens when you make comments like like that about your literal newborn baby. I was like, that that's just, this is karma. This is what Taylor Swift meant when she was singing karma. So anyway, um, I'm just going to move on. I think I gave that book one star, two stars. Whoa, that's a lot. Anyway, um, I was going to say something about Colleen Hoover. Oh, yeah, I've read Verity. Verity was, I think, my favorite book I read by her. I didn't like it very much, and it scared me, and I, I was a little bit terrified by some of the spicy scenes in that book because it was a little bit weird um but it was interesting maybe i i kind of wish you write more thrillers with a little bit less weird spicy scenes but like i don't know whatever i'm gonna move on before i (laughs) i I don't want anyone to start calling me like a colleen hoover stan or anything so i'm just gonna move oh i'm just gonna move on okay this time it's real by i can't remember the name of the author but the same author of 
if you can see the sun if you can see the sun i think i read it last year which is why it's not on this list because this is only 2023 five stars i loved that book one of my favorite books of all time probably my favorite romance book ever um that's how you write a good romance like if you can see the sun that's what i want in my romance books um and also like where do i get a henry lee i am i have not stopped simping for him since i read that book he's literally everything you can want in a man he's i'm pretty sure he's tall he's um i forgot everything he's smart he's attractive he's rich he has a british accent like what more do you want from a man like this is what i was saying i was recommending this book to my friend and i was like he's literally your type he's your he's like your ideal man come to life well not come to life but in a book and you should read it anyway um this time it's real was good not if you could see the sun good and it's probably just because henry lee wasn't in it and he's my favorite he's like in my top two of book boyfriends and you're gonna meet the other one soon but this time was real this time it's real was still adorable still so cute i just i loved it still oh my gosh okay uh four stars is what i gave it i don't know why i didn't give it five stars i feel like i could have gotten five stars but it was a really cute book it was so cute i love her books um she has a new book coming out i think it's called like oh my god wait i know it i know it i know it i know it it was like you weren't you never you were never meant to see this or something like that i feel like i'll look it up maybe but maybe not i don't know um anyway she has more romance books coming out so read them um next is the a good girl's guide to murder series this is the other book boyfriend that i will stand by and that is ravi singh this was the first time i ever read a indian love interest with a like paired with a girl who wasn't also indian um and I love that for us. I love that for us Indian girlies. I need a Ravi Singh in my life, please. Like now, please. Um, very good book. Very very good series. The romance is a subplot in this one, so it's not supposed to be on this list, but I'm going to leave it because I love this book. Again, this is how romances should be written. This is how men should be, is Ravi Singh. He's the ideal man. Um, I'm going to move on because this isn't technically a romance, but you should read the, these books. Okay, the next one is a little bit weird. So this book, I found it through YouTube Shorts, which is kind of a red flag for a book, but whatever. Um, but the author writes romance novels, and she kind of writes, like, religious... Like, she writes stories about, like, girls overcoming their religious trauma, or at least that's what this book was. Um, it's called Purity. Um, Skylar something is what I have written down. I'm so sorry, I don't remember her last name. Um, I gave it two and a half stars because it was mostly just all spicy scenes i don't know if i can say the s s word without having to mark this episode explicit i don't know how spotify handles that but anyway um yeah i don't know i felt like there just wasn't much character development it's kind of about this girl who wants to overcome she's kind of like a goody two shoes she's like never done anything with a guy before and so she asks her best friend to kind of coach her through it sort of and they end up like falling in love I mean, they're already in love. Like, they already both like each other. They just don't know it. And then they kind of end up, like, falling for each other and stuff. I don't really know. Whatever. It's fine. We're going to move on. Um, I, I read a lot. Like, a lot of these books do have a lot of spice in them. But I, even though I don't consider myself a fan of spice, I still enjoy reading spicy books. So, what does that say about me? I don't know. The next one is The Unhoneymooners. This one gets really mixed reviews. I don't know why. I think a lot of the romance girlies um, who do enjoy read reading spicy scenes and i read all their books for spice which is fine like i'm not saying anything but um those people seem to hate this book because it's very like clean i mean there is like a spicy scene but it's kind of like a fade to black like it just cuts right when they're about to do it so <laughs> it's like interesting but i thought this book was pretty cute i gave it three and a half stars because i didn't hate it i didn't love it it was like right in the middle i hate it okay no wait i did hate part of it there's always a third act breakup if you don't know what a third act breakup is it's kind of like when the two people who like like each other they get together in like the second act you know they finally have their kiss or their spicy scene and they finally end up together and then something happens and they have to break up and there's a conflict because it would be boring if they just stayed together for the whole book and i get it i get the reasoning and i've even done this you know what i mean in my novels but like there has to be a good reason and it has to be like believable and it has to be like I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. And in this book, it kind of made sense, but it also just pissed me off because, like, the love interest, he just pissed me off, bro. He was literally, I'm not going to spoil it, but he was, like, he he kind of messed up, like, right at that moment. I was like, no, like, sorry, sir, but you messed up, and now I don't like you, so <laughs> there's no going back. Sorry. Um, okay. The next three books I did not rate. They're part of a trilogy, and I wrote It's Complicated. <laughs> I read all three of these books. 
Actually, I read two of them in a row and half of the third one at night. I almost pulled an all-nighter to read these three books. The Paper Princess. I don't know I don't know what the name of the series is called, but the first book is Paper Princess, then Broken Prince and Twisted Castle. Think inheritance games, but instead of puzzles, it's just spice and like hot boys. Like it's mm-hmm. kind of insane. I I don't know why I wrote it's complicated. Wait, let me just read you what I wrote under Paper Princess because I did write something and let's read it. Did I enjoy reading this book? Yes. Would I ever admit that to society? No. Do I think this is a good book? No. So when I was reading this book, I kind of delved back into my like middle school, like me, I like my craving a boyfriend era. Like, you know, you know that era us girls, maybe not us girls, I don't want to say it like that, but you know that era some of us had where we just, like, desperately wanted to be in a romance, like a whirlwind romance sort of thing? I kind of was able to relive that fantasy through these books, which is why I enjoyed them, because I did like the romance, and I did like how much he simped for her. I did like it. I, I can't help it. But I don't think these were good books, so don't read them, because if you read them, you're going to be like, you're going to judge me for liking them, <laughs> so don't read them, please. Anyway. The American Roommate experience, experience, no, Experiment. This is by the author of The Spanish Love Deception. When I first read The Spanish Love Deception, I think I liked it, but I, as I thought more about it, I realized I didn't like it that much because it was, like, kind of boring and I didn't really enjoy the writing style. But, and, okay, the other thing I didn't like was the love interest was that he was, like, like brooding. Like, he, like, obviously liked her and it was so obvious, but he, like, wouldn't accept it and stuff. It was, like, I don't know. This love interest in The American Roommate Experience Exper- why do i keep saying experience experiment he's so cute he's like the like golden retriever he's like the fluffiest little boy ever he's not a little boy he's a man but like i loved him so much he was so freaking sweet and he made the whole book good he's like the reason and the main character was also great i didn't think i was gonna like it because generally i this is like a story about one of the side characters from the spanish love deception and i didn't like like, I didn't really care much for the side character in the first book, because she was, like, literally just there for one scene, I think. But I loved her in this book, so whatever. I accepted it. Next one, Normal People by Sally Rooney. This book got three and a half stars from me. This book was just boring. <laughs> this book was boring. Ugh, it was boring. The only word that comes to mind when I think of this book is boring and melancholy. Like, it was literally just them breaking up and getting back together and breaking up. And I know that's the point of the book, but it just didn't make any sense to me. I was like, you guys are both madly in love with each other. Just freaking stay together. Stop dating other people. We know that you're just simping for the same person. And I think the story was supposed to be like a commentary on something, but I didn't understand it. So I just moved on with my life. Um, three and a half stars. Honestly, maybe even two and a half. It wasn't that good. It wasn't that good, honestly. Maybe I should read Beautiful Ro- World, Where Are You? Because I've heard that one's better by people that i trust but we'll see okay next one i'm like dying and i still have so many more to go why do i read so much romance okay the kiss quotient i don't remember the author's name i know it starts with an h i liked this book this was like pretty much the first contemporary romance with spice in it that i ever read i think and i read it back in middle school for the first time i think or like ninth grade or something and i recently reread it and i was like yeah i love this book it's so cute it's so sweet um, it's about a girl named Stella. Stella, I think is her name. She hires an escort named Michael to help her out because she's very, like, socially awkward and, like, not good with romance. And they end up falling in love, and it's very cute. So, I loved it. I gave it four stars. I've seen people hate on it. I have no idea why. I think this one also has a third act breakup that I hated, but anyway. Moving on. The Wrong Prom Date. Two stars. <laughs> the writing style the writing style and also i just like didn't like it was kind of unrealistic because like okay this is like the premise right the girl this girl has a crush on this her neighbor and her neighbor like got sent away to some boarding school but he's back now and so her crush is like back and her neighbor's younger brother who has a crush on her but she doesn't care about him offers to fake date her because his brother likes to steal things that he likes so he's like oh if you date me my brother will get jealous and try to date you and it's such a weird freaking premise because like spoiler alert the brother that she has her crush on is an is he's awful like he's terrible and it's so easy to see and i hate that she's like completely blind to it it's like weird i don't like it so that's why i gave it two stars i think 
Next one is called For the Boys. I gave this book three stars. I think I deducted a point just because of like the title. I didn't understand the title of this book at all. I don't know why it's called For the Boys. I'm pretty sure this is like a hockey player romance. I thought it was cute, honestly. I, I didn't really understand the beginning part because I felt like they had already met, but then they like already like he like DM'd her and they liked each other. I don't know. It was like a weird progression, but I thought it was cute, so I accepted it. Um, next one is another one by Allie Hazelwood. Sorry, I know I'm rushing now, but this episode's at 20 minutes, so I'm trying to get to the end. Uh, the next one I gave three stars, Under One Roof, again, by Allie Hazelwood. Uh, this one's a novella, and she has three novellas out, like, these three, it's actually about three friends. I didn't really, I didn't like the other two, I couldn't get into them, but I liked this one, Under One Roof. Um, as you can tell by the title, like, they are forced to move in together, and that's, like, forced proximity. Ugh, my favorite thing ever. It was so cute. I loved it. I I don't really know what I can say. There is one scene. Okay. Um, slight warning for, like, just, like, a little bit of a mention. Actually, no, it's fine. There's, like, no. I'm just gonna tell you a really funny scene that I thought, like, I, like, I couldn't stop. I got so much secondhand embarrassment. There's this one scene where, like, she realizes that she has, like, a crush on him, on the guy she's living with, and she's like calling with her friends who are like living far away and she's calling with them and she's like telling them about all the things she wants him to do to her and like literally he's like standing by the door listening in and like later you find out that she like that he heard everything but like the image is so funny to me of her just sitting here describing like graphic images of how she wants what she wants him to do and he's just like sitting by the door with his ear like to the crack and just listen it's so funny bro (laughs) it's like peak comedy to me I don't know if that explanation was necessary, whatever. Um, last book. I'm (laughs) like, guys, I'm literally exhausted. Okay. Last book. This one's a TikTok favorite. So y'all know about it already. I'm sure. Four stars. Icebreaker. I loved this book. Like as far as books with spice go, this one was good. I'll say that. Um, there was like the one car scene that was insane. I was like reading with my mouth open. I was like, what? I was like, I hand over my mouth. I was like flabbergasted. But anyway, good book. Four stars. The romance was adorable. Uh, I didn't really understand any of the, like, like, I mostly just read the romance scenes. I skipped over everything else. Whatever. It's fine. Four stars. Okay, I know I said I was going to do a little talk about, like, romance, age ratings and stuff. We didn't get to any of that, did we? Mostly, um, the way I was going to talk about age ratings was with the Paper Princess series. Honestly, this series could have been better if it wasn't marketed towards... 12 year olds because i think that's who this is marketed towards but it it should not be because the scenes are very graphic not graphic but like they're very like explicit um and they also kind of glorify toxicity which is not fun and it should not be given to like little kids so uh romance books are good most of the ones i read are adult so there's nothing wrong with the type of scenes they have and the age ratings and stuff so i'm good with them um but yeah so I don't really know what I learned from this. So if you want to write a good romance book, at least in my opinion, you should make it not cringy and not like blatantly obvious that they like each other, like that they can't like obliviousness when it's obvious. I know it can be endearing, but to me, it's just irritating. So sorry. Okay, I'm tired. So I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you have stuck around this far, you're an angel. I love you. Be sure to follow, subscribe, rate the show, all that stuff. Follow me on Instagram at the Writers Afterglow. Um, I post writing tips on there. I know this episode wasn't very writing focused, but generally I'm more writing focused. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Uh, let me know what you thought of this episode in the description in the little submit box, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I upload every Saturday. That's what I forgot to say. I upload every Saturday. Um, so make sure you turn on notifications and everything so you don't miss an episode. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Love you.